In this video, we're going to get started on assembling the speedometer unit and a few other bits and pieces. Okay, so let's just do a quick overview of where we are at at the moment. Um, what I've got installed now is the steering column. I'll just talk through a few things about that first. So first of all, one of the obvious things you might notice the indicator stalk is off at a 45 degree angle. Um, it's meant to be like that. And the reason for that is obviously because this e vehicle doesn't have like leg room like a normal car door where you put your legs in. If that steering wheel was horizontal, um, is, you're pretty much gonna be bashing into it every time you get in and out. Um, the other feature on this too, it has a ignition switch which has a, a lock on it. So on the actual steering lock itself, there is a small hole and you'll see a pin comes out and pushes into that hole to make the steering locked. Um, what else? Um, the rest of it is the same as a standard um, steering column. Um, the other thing when you're installing it, of course, make sure for the indicator cancel, there's a pin on the actual column which um, clicks the ends of those um, parts that stick out when it engages the turn signals. Make sure that is in the right position when you install it all. Apart from that, that bit was pretty easy. Um, I've also done the wheel alignment too. Um, I've got about 1.5, 1.6 millimetre toe out. Um, all right, let's take a look at the console. All right, so on the console, I'll talk through the wiring in a second, but um, I'll just go through some of these. So that's your normal switch for your headlights, like park lights and then headlights. Now, over here, that's where you'd normally have the switch which activates the sprayer to spray the water on the windscreen. Um, and I'll explain in a second why I've done things a bit different. Over here, I've got another button here. This is where you would normally have the rotary switch to turn the wipers on. Um, so instead, I've got in this spot here, I've just got a push button. That push button will activate the water sprayer to spray water on the windscreen. This switch over here is just an on off switch. Um, and the reason why I've just gone for that, that will turn the wipers on and then off. Um, the actual wiper unit, um, it doesn't actually have all the um, park mechanism. I don't know whether it's just an older version or it's just incomplete. So the, the way the wipers work, um, you'll have to switch off the switch when they come down to the bottom. So there's no auto park. That's something I can sort out at a later date. But I've just got it done like this way for now. So that's just a normal on off switch. Um, choke cable will come out of there. All right, let's have a look at the wiring. All right, so let's, let's just get this dog out of the way for a second. Um, let's have a look at, I'll turn this around so we can see the wiring. All right, so pretty much I've just got everything connected up where it should be. Um, the only differences are obviously with the wiper switch. So. There's extra wires here because that would normally be going to a rotary switch. So all I've done there, I've just connected up two. Um, so it gets power here. Power comes into that line there. That red cable feeds back to this bunch here. And then obviously I'm only going to use the earth wire and that red wire, which gets power once the switch is turned on. So they, those two will be connected to the... Um, wiper motor and um, obviously once I sort out a newer unit which has the park mechanism I can reattach all them other additional wires to it. Um, what else is different? Um, I've pretty much just connected everything up how it's meant to be. Um, indicator direction, I'll talk about that in a second because at the moment there's only one globe which flashes when the indicators are on. Um, I'm going to do something similar to what I did in the Mini um, and I have to figure out whether I use relays to, to get the um, signals turning left and right, um, the, in, the, orange, um, the orange lamps to 
flash the direction that you're turning um, but I'll have to have, have, have to figure out how I did that in the Mini. I'm pretty sure I'd shoot two relays, but I'll look up that. Um, there's a few other wires which are unused. Um, the handbrake warning light and the park brake lever warning light, they're not connected, so they're just sort of just bundled up there for now. Um, that will connect to the indicator stalk. Um, those wires here lead to the uh, ignition key. Um, I've also put in a earth wire to this point here too. Okay, so speedometer cable needs to be connected to the back of the unit before it fits up here. And this bunch of wires here, they'll lead to the um, gauges for the oil and temperature. I had to add all that in myself. The only one that was there obviously is the line coming from the temperature sender, um, but all of the other components I had to put on there. Okay, so I have done a little bit more progress since I last recorded anything. Um, that's not the original horn, um, but it is a mini horn. Um, the original one it doesn't actually work so this one I sandblasted and painted up um, it actually works so it will do for now um, I still have to fit the uh, washer bottle that will go here I'll leave that until I do the windscreen wipers um, this these connections here are for the indicator on the right hand side um, I've done the wiring on the left side now so I've installed that park light and left indicator and on the back the tail light, stop light, and left indicator for the rear. I just need to do the other side. Um, I have also installed the temperature gauge and oil gauge. I've got them fixed to the bottom of the unit. So that little um, piece, the holder sort of just screws onto the bottom and it mounts on that way. So that looks pretty good. Um, choke cable, I've just screwed that end of in there, but I'll sort out where it's going to go. I believe um, uh, it is this hole right there. I think that's where it's meant to go through. Um, but I'll have to just double check that. Okay, so with the tail lights, um, they're the products, there's the um, part number. Um, I actually found it's cheaper to buy these off eBay um, spares box, I think it was the um, seller. It took a few weeks to come, but I order these things earlier so they do arrive on time. Um, it was around about 20 Australian dollars, so that's half the price that a lot of the mini suppliers sell them for. So, spares box on eBay, um, that was alright. Um, this one, that's going to be the reverse light. I just picked that up at my local auto parts store. I can't remember how much I paid for that. Um, just retail price, probably around about um, 20, something like that. Um, the other thing too, I'm going to fit the um, wiring to um, the trailer wiring. So I've done plenty of work on trailers previously, so that shouldn't be an issue. It's going to get most of the connections from under here. So in, these are the connections for the right rear um, lights. Um, I believe the reverse light is in there. That's why there's four. Uh, this cable here leads to uh, well under here. And then that's where the um, number plate light is going to be installed. So I'll leave that one until last because I don't know about the wiring positions. Um, on the other side, everything's sort of just fitted. So where you have these um, terminals on the um, wire ring harness, um, that's sort of got a clip up there somehow. Um, and then adding the leads that come with the light. These are long enough, but... Um, they just need um, bullet connectors put on the ends of those so they can be installed. Um, I might actually record putting this on that way you can see how it's done. Okay, so with the rear tail light, um, that's one of the new pieces that I just sort of showed you. One of the issues is, um, as always, holes don't always line up where they should. So you'll notice that um, all of these existing holes are in a nice straight line um, that's an original light fitting and you'll see that that hole there that hole there and where the wires go through they're all in a straight line on the newer ones you'll realize that the hole is up here instead of here so all you need to do is um, obviously remove the globes and then 
Probably the easiest way to do this is to put it where it needs to go. So the indicator obviously goes that direction. Uh, you want to line up these two, that hole there and that one there because that's where the screws will go through. I might just uh, push these wires through. That way it sort of sits flat on the fitting. Um, and then obviously from the other side, just use a pen to mark a circle where that hole is. Okay, so the next step now, what I'm ready to do is install some wiring connectors. I'm gonna just use um, bullets because they'll connect directly into the um, existing connections on the wiring loom. Okay, so I've got those um, connections put on there. Um, I'm just trying to work out how the best way to do the trailer wiring. I'm not probably gonna do it in this video. I'll do that as a separate one. But um, using these standard bullet joiners, um, something like that, where that can go onto there, and then another wire connects to the existing harness and also goes to the trailer wire. I'll do something like that, because ideally you don't want to splice into these ones. You can splice into the main wiring harness. Um, that can be an option just using wiring splices. Um, because the way this works, you want this to be able to come straight out if you need to replace it, and that's how you buy it. All right, so they need to get inserted into the rubber pad. So rubber pad is the next thing that goes on. Uh, there is like an imprint of where that hole that we did drill. So need to make sure we get this the right way around, uh, just to make things easier. So line things up on there. Um, you don't cut into here. Don't make a hole there. You need to make a slit there for the screw. Um, obviously a slit here for the wires and then another slit here for the screw. Um, I'm just gonna use a Stanley knife to do that. And I'll just, I'll just do a slit because once the wires go through, um, it'll um, close back up and then uh, hopefully not let too much water in there. And then just for these ones, you could probably punch it with a screwdriver. That might be a, a safer option. Just do make sure you do these holes and not these outside edges. Okay, so now we're at the stage where we can obviously feed the wires through. Just do them one at a time. Okay, um, just be aware when you screw this to the vehicle, um, if it's been recently repainted like this one, um, the spring washer should hopefully scratch the paint on the other side at, when it's tightened up and hopefully that will give you an earth. But you'll need to test to make sure that this whole back and plate here is earthed. So let me just get some screws on it. Okay, so taking a look underneath, um, you can sort of see that if that's hooked up the top there, things aren't gonna fit. So what I'm gonna do is just connect them up and then um, I may just get a cable tie just to hold everything away from the wheel. Um, the other issue too is that some of these numbers have um, worn off. So you may need to do a bit of um, testing to work out which connection is which. Um, you can of course go by the color of the wire and then hopefully that'll help you out.
Okay, so we've completed all of those uh, indicators, parking lights, and tail lights. And also the reverse light. Okay, so I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching my videos.